In this lesson, we're going to be discussing positioning paragraphs with indents and spacing. If you'd like to follow along, go to File, Open, and in the Working Files folder, go into Chapter Number 7 and select Paragraph Panel, and just click Open. Before we get started, why don't we go to our Zoom tool and just click and drag across the left-hand page to make the text bigger. Now I'm going to go to my Type tool. In the previous lesson, we discussed the Align features across the top of the Paragraph panel. In this lesson, we're going to continue in the Paragraph panel discussing indents and spacing. I'm just going to select this top paragraph in the second column over next to my first subhead and just get an insert point. And I'm going to click the up arrow next to left indent and watch what happens. You can see that the text is moving further and further in away from the left hand side of the column or frame. I can do the same thing along the right hand side of the column. I can click my up arrow and you can see that the text is moving in from the right hand side of the frame. The next field has to do with a first line indent. If I click my up arrow, you can see that I'm making a paragraph indent, but I can also make a negative paragraph indent. What I'm going to do is scroll down just a little bit and select some of these bullet paragraphs. One of the things that you can do with indents is set up bullet formatting. This is considered the old traditional way of setting up bullets and numbering. It's the same way that earlier layout programs before InDesign had to create bullet formatting. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did in the paragraph above. I'm going to make an indent from the left-hand side. Now I'm going to do a negative first line indent. You can actually make the first line go back towards the left-hand side by doing a negative indent. When the number in the indent field, the left indent field, and the first line indent are exactly the same, except there's a minus sign in front of the first line indent, your bullet should be sitting right up against the left hand side of my frame or column. I'm going to turn on invisible characters for just a second. Show hidden characters under the type menu, just to show you that there is a tab next to the bullet. The tab will push everything after the bullet to line up perfectly with the left hand indent. There are better ways to create bullet and numbering formatting, and we'll be talking about that in an upcoming lesson. I'm going to talk about another way to create bullets using something called indent to here. I'm just going to go to my next paragraph. Scroll down a little bit, and I'm going to go under the type menu to insert special character, symbols, bullet character. So now I have my bullet. I'm going to hit my space bar a couple of times. And I'm going to go back under the type menu to insert special character, other, indent to here. And what it's doing is, wherever the indent to here is added, everything after that will line up perfectly to the left. And the bullet, which comes before the indent to here, along with the two spaces, is to the left of that indent to here. So it is bullet formatting. Now, it is positively the fastest way to create a single bullet but it's also the least efficient way to format multiple bullets because every time I wanted to create a new bullet, I would have to do the same manual process. You see, this kind of formatting cannot be saved as a paragraph style. We'll be talking about a much better way to create bullets 
and numbering formatting in an upcoming lesson. Another way to position type within your paragraph. Let me just get an insert point in this paragraph right under the little boy taking a picture with his camera. And I'm just going to go under my type menu to insert special character, other, and I'm going to choose something called a right indent tab. And you can see that everything after that got pushed as far as it could go in the column or frame to the right hand side. Now, this can be very useful if you're working on something like a menu where you want all of your prices sticking out towards the right. So if I type a dollar sign, let's say, and 23, you can see as I'm adding the text, it's still sticking to that right hand side. So all of my prices, if I had more than one, they'll all be aligning towards the right hand side. One last thing, why don't I scroll up just a little bit and I'm going to click in this paragraph that's supposed to be a caption. And I'm going to align it to the right. So I'm going to click Align Right in the Alignment section of the Paragraph panel. What if, for some reason, I didn't want this last line to go all the way to the right-hand side? I wanted to push it back. I'm going to click my up arrow next to this next field, which is Last Line Right Indent. It will indent only the last line if you're using right alignment. One last thing. How do I add space before and space after? A lot of people, what they'll do is make an extra paragraph return by hitting return or enter. And you can see, yes, that does add more space. The only problem with that is if I decide it's too much space, then I would have to select each individual extra paragraph return one at a time and make the point size less to decrease that space. Not at all an efficient way to work. Instead of that, let me just select that extra paragraph return. I can select multiple paragraphs at the same time. And you can see there's already space after. The icon is actually very good. It shows lines of text with an arrow pointing towards space underneath the type. So that is space after. If I click my up arrow, I am increasing that space. If I hit my down arrow, I'm decreasing that space. Let me go all the way back down to zero. So now there's no space between the paragraphs I have selected. I can also do space above. If I click my up arrow, it's adding space, but in the opposite way. It's adding space above each paragraph. In the next lesson, we're going to continue talking about paragraph formatting.